This video is going to walk us through how to schedule regular recurring type jobs or sort of jobs that are done on a recurring basis and in a, in a predictable pattern. Jobs that would fall into this category would include things like mowing and trimming. Stuff we're going to go either every week or every other week on a fixed day of the week and go do this over and over and over again for a period of time. There is another job for recurring work called irregular schedules, and that's more for stuff like lawn, uh, lawn care, chemical applications, etc. This video is going to deal with regular recurring type work, predictable schedules such as mowing. So we're going to look at here at how to add a job to a mowing calendar. And again, just like in construction, if you haven't, if you've watched that video, you can add a job to a schedule for a number of different places. If you're on the whiteboard, you can go down here and you can say schedule job, and that will add a job to the schedule. If you're on the calendar view, same thing, you can go down here and you can say add a job to calendar, and you'll add a job to the schedule. Or on the job itself, you can go to the uh, schedule tab on the job and add a job right from the schedule here. So you can absolutely create a schedule for a job uh, from, this, from this place here. I'm going to clear out this schedule here. I've got two that I'm going to blow out. And we're going to create a brand new schedule for this job from scratch. So this job has a, a number of different tasks, mowing and trimming, cleanups, lawn care, irrigation service, and some pruning. I'm only going to schedule the mowing and trimming at this point. These things are done at different patterns, different recurrences, at different times of the year. Um, so we're just going to schedule the mowing and trimming for now. We can add the other stuff later, and we'll tackle the lawn care in the second video. So I go in the schedule tab on the job and I'm going to click add to calendar. First, I need to select the calendar. Now, remember again, I'm scheduling the mowing part of this job. So I'm going to pick my mowing calendar. Now I need to pick the task on the job that I'm scheduling. So what it's saying here is I've, I've got nothing scheduled for this job. It's all underneath the unscheduled heading. If I'd already scheduled something, some part of this job, it would show under a, a scheduled heading. But in this case, it's telling me I don't have any schedules yet for this job. So here's my work areas, mowing, cleanups, lawn care, irrigation, pruning. I'm going to schedule the mowing, so I'm going to pick that one. Schedule description is whatever you want to show up on the calendar. So I might add mowing to this just to be crystal clear. And if you use work area or work uh, job IDs for your jobs, that's great. And if you don't, you can take that right out. It's up to you. Uh, work order number, if you want to include that, that can go there. I'll leave it blank. And then your manager, person in charge of managing this job. So we'll click next. Now it's asking me, now remember, I've picked my mowing calendar. And if you haven't watched the video on work calendars, you need to watch that before you watch this. You can create patterns. So you can have a bronze, a silver, and a gold package for mowing. And all I need to do now is pick what package that customer selected. So let's say this company wants the silver package. So I picked the silver. The interval is set to weekly. The starting date is known because that's the starting date of our silver packages each year. But if you were set, uh, starting a job midway through the year, you'd obviously uh, customize that to start whenever it is that you're starting. And then the weekday that you want to schedule it on is picked down here. So I'm going to pick this job, for example, on Wednesdays. So I'll set that Wednesdays to on. Now, I'd already set this up in my work calendar. This is our pattern for the silver mowing package. From January 4th to March 28th, we come every two weeks. Then from the end of March through to early November, we go weekly. Then we go back to every other week until the end of the year. Service type is cut because that's what we're doing when we're going. We're cutting and possibly trimming. I can make changes here, but if they signed up for the silver package, then chances 9 out of 10, I've done all the work I need to do. I just really picked the day of the week that we want to schedule this work on. So we're going to click next now. And now what it does is read the job as it was set up in LMN time. So the job was set up with 146 man hours. And we know we just scheduled this job for 42 visits. That's the silver package. So what it does is take the man hours and divide it by the visits to say, we're going to estimate 3.48 man hours per visit. You can change this at this point. You can come up here and you can mess with these numbers to get it correctly. Remember, this is man hours per visit, not crew hours yet. We'll get to crew hours in a second. But assuming your element time job is set up correctly, then this should be correct. If it's incorrect, you can you can fix it at this point. Um, your planned crew will be which crew you want to assign this job to. So I can leave it as unassigned because I don't know who's doing it yet. But it sure would be faster at this point whether if I did know the crew. So I, I know I'm going to assign this job to Mo Crew C. So I'm going to pick them. 
Now it knows Mo Crew C as a two person crew. So that's where that came in. I can change it. If for this particular job, if I want to use a four man crew or a one man crew, I can do that. I'll leave it at two for now. Now that it knows there's two persons on this crew, it takes the estimated man hours, divides it by two to say, the crew time required to complete this work is gonna be 1.75 hours, and we're gonna need a quarter of an hour of drive time to get there. So I need to schedule then one hour and 59 minutes, which includes the 15 minutes of unproductive time. And what that gives us is 1.74 hours, so 0.74 being just about uh, 45 minutes, plus 15 minutes of drive time is gonna give us that just about two hours of schedule time for the crew, which includes time to do the cut and time to do the drive time if drive time wasn't included in the estimate. Assuming you're all good here and make sure you do this right, this is probably the most important part of the schedule, getting that duration correct. Assuming you're all good here, you click next, it's gonna give you a summary. And when you click next again, what it'll actually do is break down this job all the different visits that are going to be scheduled. So basically it's going to show that I'm going to schedule 42 visits from January 7th through to March. And I can take a quick look at these to make sure everything's good. I, I noted earlier, you can set warning flags and you're going to see a couple of warnings here. When the job changes from weekly to bi-weekly, we're getting a couple of warnings just saying that, hey, it's less than the time purely because of the, at that point we changed intervals. We went from weekly to bi-weekly. So it's just warning you that, hey, it could be too close, but in this case, it's fine. The other notable item up here is your scheduled hours um, versus number of hours that you're actually scheduling. So on the left here, it's basically saying, I'm scheduling 129.3 hours. The estimate had 146, so we're actually a couple hours short. And the reason for that is time factors. When we set up the work calendar, and you should really watch that video if you haven't yet, we basically said from January to April, it's gonna take us longer to do this job because we're going bi-weekly. But from April through to November, we're going to do it in a lot less time, 80% of the normal time, because we're going every week and the property is going to be good in shape. When I apply the time factors, I actually ended up a little short. So even though I estimated 146 hours, we're only scheduling 129. That could prompt your scheduler at this point to maybe bump up some of these hours. And you can do that now, or you could just leave it. But I'll pump up a couple just to get it back to regular. We'll say, you know, during the spring when things are growing, quickly, I'll put it up to 100. So which is 100% time factor is the right average amount of hours per visit. And we'll do that until about. So if I estimated one hour 59 minutes per visit, that's exactly what it's going to schedule. 80% of that time is one hour and 38 minutes. And you can see up here, two hour and 20 minutes is 120% of the time. So I scheduled 100% through to to June, July, and August, we'll say it's really hot and uh, things start growing slowly. So we don't, we, we can get away with 80% there, may even get away with less. Uh, it depends on your climate, depends on your season, what you would use for time factors. But I'll bump these up again here. And now I'm a lot closer. So now I'm within 2% estimated hours versus scheduled hours, close enough for the purposes of this video. We'll move on. I'll click finish. And I'm gonna add these events to my calendar. And now I've got a schedule. So I've got Alpha Bank mowing, 42 visits from January 7th to December 23rd. If I want to see the details, and remembering I'm on the job screen right now, this is the Alpha Bank job. If I want to see the details, I can click details, and there's every single visit. None of them have been completed yet, but you'll note as the crews knock them off off their timesheets, they'll start showing them up as completed and which crew completed them and what date they were completed on. Um, you can even do that. If the crews make a mistake, you can always go to edit here and don't mark it off. If the crews don't mark it off, you can always go to edit and you can say complete. You can mark it which day you completed it on um, and hit save. And there you go. It'll it'll say on Wednesday, December, uh, Wednesday, January 7th, it was completed by and the person was logged in. Or I can always set it back to scheduled if that was a mistake as well. And now it's back to incomplete. You'll also see this job show up on the schedule screens. So if I look at the whiteboard, this is the daily whiteboard. If I go to a, a Wednesday in, in January and I slide across here to Mo Crew C, there's my Alpha Bank job. And if I look at the calendar view for Mo Crew C and I move forward to January, you're gonna see every second Wednesday of the month, Alpha Bank is scheduled and that'll continue 
through February, through March. And then once it hits April, now it clicks into weekly. So I'll have Apple Bank every Wednesday. And it was that fast. It took some about uh, two and a half minutes there to schedule the job. It's scheduled out for the year. At this point, I can start moving dates around and doing all kinds of stuff, rescheduling it to cruise and that kind of thing on a daily basis. But for now, you've created your year schedule up front. And now all you need to do is adjust it as the year goes forward. To see how to set up a, a more complicated or at least a more irregular schedule, such as lawn care, uh, we'll have a next video coming up, which will be scheduling recurring work for an irregular schedule, such as lawn care. Watch that video to see how to do some more irregular.